I hope guys you enjoyed the previous lecture with the spatial interpolation. I know you're gonna use it. I know you're gonna create some awesome motion path and you know, get your animations to be outstanding. Please guys, if you have any question, I repeat that, post it in the Q&A section of the course. I want you to understand this 100% fully. I reduced the number of keyframes here to make it simple for temporal interpolation. I also, if you right click, you go to keyframe interpolation, I changed everything to linear. So now we want to focus on temporal interpolation. You have the same options, linear, Bezier, continuous Bezier, and auto Bezier. And you have hold keyframes, we'll see that later. Let's start with the continuous Bezier because it's the easiest here. And I'll click OK. Now notice nothing has happened in the timeline or in spatial here in the, for the motion path. That is because you cannot see how in time the speed is behaving or the values are behaving. You need to go to the graph editor, it's just over here. If you click, now you're looking at the graph of the speed. How do you know that? There is the second icon here that's important. If you click on it, you notice you can use edit value graph or speed graph. So now we want to work with the speed graph, okay? Let's choose this one. The eye here, you have two options. You can put them, leave the magnet on and leave the auto zoom graph height on. Now, we have here the three keyframes. If you select them, you notice that they have also some kind of bars here. I will not work with all keyframes. I'm gonna take the middle one over here. And you notice if you point, it says shape layer one, position, and the speed, pixels per second, 282. If you click on it, you can drag it down. Notice I'm reducing the speed. Now I would like you to notice on the graph here what's happening. When I change the speed, the frames are somehow moving in a certain direction. So now I have very high speed on this keyframe. So what are we looking at? Notice here in the spatial, the, the frames here are very much next to each other. It means it's slow. And here they start separating. It means the speed is fast and it comes to the keyframe. And from here, they start very fast and then slow. Look at the graph, it's exactly the same. You start at a certain speed. In fact, you decrease the speed, you can read it. You start at 287, you decrease to 75, it goes up and then it goes down. That's the speed. Let's play your animation from here. Press space bar, notice. Oh. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now you are altering the speed of the motion graph. The motion graph will stay intact in the spatial. Now we have the two handles here. This is the influence. The right handle will influence the right side of the keyframe. If you click and drag it out, notice what's happening here. The frames are getting to be adjusted. I'll take it to almost nothing, zero influence here. You notice I'm trying not to change the speed. So that's what's happening here. Now the influence is so little on this graph that the graph has changed. It's gonna jump to a certain speed and slow down and come to almost a nil speed. Let's play, notice what's happening. Cool and okay. So let's make it change it while it's playing. Notice what's happening. We have got it back and let's change this side. And let's change the left side. Okay, here you are. Now you can play with the speed the way you would like. You can move the keyframes. Actually here I'm moving the keyframes in time according to the timeline. Notice where the keyframe now, I changed its place. So here you are really playing how the speed is gonna be within your motion graphs or your motion path. Okay, now let's take this one down and notice what's gonna happen, okay? The influence is very big. So it's gonna start speedy or start at certain speed, go very speedy, slow down and come down. Okay guys, so it's pretty cool. You can come and play with it and try all what you want to try. It's as easy as this. Okay, it's just about adjusting it the way you would like. Now, if you want to return the keyframes to linear, so we can choose something else, I'll click on position, selected all the keyframes, and to return them to linear, just over here. Convert selected keyframes to linear. We click on it, now they are linear. Let's right click on a keyframe and go to keyframe interpolation, and here from temporal interpolation, let's change it to Bezier. And we click OK. Now Bezier, remember the handles were not parallel in the spatial. Also, it's over here, 
they are broken. So if you click on a keyframe, you notice it has two handles now, one for the incoming and one for the outgoing. If you play with the handle, look what's happening here. Of course, I've selected all the keyframes. Click out, select a single keyframe. So notice how we are playing with the speed. So this Bezier will allow you to have an incoming speed, you know, to this keyframe and an outgoing speed to this keyframe. Actually, they don't even have correlation, but they have influence. This is the influence. Here you are. Now notice how it's changing. Well, is this complicated? Yes, it is. But actually, you don't need to master it. Like, I know what's going to happen. Just look at the graph here. That's what I explained in the previous lectures and decide, okay, this is what I would like to do. Now, let's uh, return them to linear just for the sake. I'll select all of them and click them back to linear and go back to one of them in keyframe interpolation. And let's change from linear to continuous Bezier. And we click OK. Now, continuous Bezier will smooth it out. And if you touch it or you change, it's going to become continuous Bezier. Very cool. OK, guys. So we're going to come over here and play with the graph during the course a lot. And it's up to you how you want your animation to work and how you want to do the motion graphics, lower thirds, whatever. Cool, guys. This is all about this graph. It seems complicated, but actually, it's a matter of using it. And it's going to become pretty easy, you will see. Thank you very much for listening. This is about the temporal interpolation. And in the next lecture, we move to practically how to use it. I'll see you then.